Hello everybody, Alex Lambert here. Just got done watching the NASCAR race in Homestead, Miami today. And William Byron has won his second career race at Homestead, Miami. Got his first in Daytona of 2020 and just got his second career win today in a Homestead, Miami in 2021. And this is certainly going to be a pretty big win for him and for the younger drivers that we've been talking about going into this season. Uh, we had Daytona won by Michael McDowell. And Michael McDowell is not necessarily a young driver. He's been in the sport for quite some time, but he's never won a race until this year. He won the 500, his first career win. He had Christopher Bell. It's only his second season in NASCAR. He wins the second race of the year, uh, gets his first career win. Uh, and then you got this week, you got William Byron, another one of those younger drivers uh, in the 24 car. He gets his second career win uh, at Homestead, Miami. Uh, so <laughs> I think we've kind of set the tone that this could be the next generation of NASCAR drivers kind of stepping up here. But let's talk about William Byron for a minute and what this win means for him. Certainly, this is a pretty big win for him. I know the first win's obviously huge. But a lot of people are talking about, you know, th this could just be a, when, when he won at Daytona, and, and this happens every time a driver has only won at Ta Daytona or Talladega, or maybe a rain-shortened race or something of that nature, is this just a fluke win? He's not actually a good driver. He doesn't have actual talent. Um, it's just It was just a fluke. He just got lucky one time at Daytona and won the Daytona July or the Daytona summer race last year. Uh, and a lot of people have said that. Now you can't say that because he essentially dominated the, at least the second half of the race today in Miami, leading, uh, winning by over five seconds above Tyler Reddick, who finished second. When Tyler Reddick is also one of those younger drivers who uh, finished runner-up, that certainly builds the name up for William Byron that, hey, he can win at these types of racetracks that are not restrictor plates, and he can you know help build up a race car that is fast and go out there and win more races. Uh, and also, this is big for him because there's been some talk going around. I believe Kyle Petty said some things about this. Uh, this week, and, 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 and people have been talking about this for a little bit over a year now. Look, these younger drivers, and a lot of people have been talking about this, these younger drivers such as William Byron, Alex Bowman are not winning, and now that you've got guys like Christopher Bell stepping up and getting some wins, and, and, and Cole Custer who won a race last year, you know, this kind of makes those other drivers maybe a little bit nervous, you know, potentially could lose their ride to a, to another young driver. But now I think, especially with William Byron getting this win and hopefully a few more for him uh, in the future can definitely secure that spot in the 24 car. I'm not saying I don't think he's good enough to drive, you know, for Hendrick, but certainly this, this kind of proves that, hey, I deserve to be in the 24 car. I don't need to be replaced with another younger driver coming up from the Trucks or Xfinity Series. So big win for him. Let's talk about the guy in second, Tyler Reddick. Finishes second today. He had a good run. He, he was trying to run down William Byron, but like I said, William Byron essentially dominated this race. Didn't have much of a chance. He had Martrex Jr. had a decent run, uh, finishing third. Uh, Martrex Jr.'s best finish of the season, I believe. Uh, and that was also the best finishing Toyota for Joe Gibbs. Uh, Kyle Larson. This is one I really wanted to talk to. I talked about him in last week's video. Kyle Larson has never run a race in Miami that was not the championship race. And this is important because in the championship race, a lot of times you want to stay out of the Final Four's way, and Larson's never made the Final Four. Therefore, Larson has never won in Miami, although it seems like every year when we go to the season finale, no longer, but when we did go to the season finale in Miami, he would dominate the race up till maybe the last you know, 100 laps or even less than that uh, and kind of let the championship uh, four battle it out, which is a pretty respectful move by Kyle Larson, but he didn't really have the chance to go out there and race them hard you know, and, and try to win in Miami. Well, today was that day. He had a really fast race car, especially during the daytime portion of the race, the first half of the race where the sun was completely up. Larson was one of the fastest cars. He was running either the fastest lap time or the second fastest lap time at times. He was extremely fast during the daylight portion. And then, of course, you know, when the sun went down, he was still very fast. He still got a fourth place finish, which is decent, uh, but wasn't able to catch, you know, Byron or Reddick. They were just a little bit faster than he was. Uh, and, and Larson probably wouldn't have been able to catch up to them, even with the help of a caution or anything like that. Now, Larson's one that I want to look at, and, and I think a lot of fans, if you've been watching NASCAR for quite some time, you know Kyle Larson's got some racing talent. Even when he was out of NASCAR last season, for, for most of the season last year, he was winning dirt races like crazy. Kyle Larson can drive. He did good at the Daytona Road Course. He did good. He pretty he did pretty decent in the 500. That's a completely different style racetrack from what we will see a majority of NAS, the NASCAR season. But I would definitely keep my eye on Kyle Larson. Had a good run last week until he got caught up in an accident and did very well today. Got a top five today, and this is only his third race back. Oh boy, Kyle Larson, you got to watch him because I think he can do. 
I think he can win some races this year, and we'll see how far he can go into the playoffs. But I wouldn't be surprised at all to see Kyle Larson win a couple of races for Hendrick Motorsports in that five car. So definitely one to watch. You got Kevin Harvick, got a top five finish, finished fifth. Another big name I want to mention, Michael McDowell. Michael McDowell has finished top 10 in the first three races of the 2021 season. Who would have guessed? I believe he's second in points right now. Um, uh, finished first in the Daytona 500, got a top 10 last week at the road course, and then, of course, finished sixth today. Michael McDowell's having an incredible year. And not to mention, last week at the road course, he started out on the first lap, got in some big trouble, and was able to crawl his way back. So, hey, the 34 team, Front Row Motorsports, what can they do here uh, in 2021? So far, they're proving that they, they can run up front. They've they got three top 10s, and they won the Daytona 500. So, it's it's right now, it's a great season going uh, for Michael McDowell. And I, I, I love to see if that can continue and see if their equipment can keep up with, with some of the other guys. Um and continue to, you know, get these top 10 finishes and, and contend for points and, you know, potentially see how far they can go in the playoffs. I know it's just the first three races, but it is definitely something to note that they have got another top 10 finish. I want to talk about Chris Buescher a little bit. At the very beginning of the race, you had Logano, Keselowski battling it out. And then you actually had Chris Buescher, who was running extremely fast lap times, went past uh, Brad Keselowski for the lead. And then I don't know what happened to him after that. He kind of got shuffled back, uh, ended up finishing 19th. Uh, and then, of course, you got to talk about Denny Hamlin, last year's winner at Miami. Uh, Denny Hamlin had an incredible season last year. We all know this. Unfortunately, didn't win the championship, but still had a quite an amazing season. Still trying to get back to that here in 2021. A bit of a slow start for him. He was running very well today, then actually ended up... Uh, getting a speeding penalty. I don't think he was quite fast enough to be able to get to William Byron, but certainly you know, could have got a top five finish if it wasn't for that pit road speeding penalty, but was able to climb his way up to 11th uh, and get an 11th place finish. So uh, another, another rough day for Denny Hamlin, and I think Denny Hamlin, at least previously, maybe not so much in 2020, but before 2020, he was almost known for getting pit road speeding penalty. So hopefully that doesn't continue into 2021. So hopefully this is just a one-time thing for him. You know, so far in 2021, we've got a lot of upset winners. So this is getting me excited for Las Vegas next week. I mean, who, can we have another upset winner next week? Uh, could it be uh, uh, Ross Chastain? I'm looking at Chase Briscoe uh, in the 14 car for, for Stuart Haas Racing. Uh, you're looking at Alex Bowman, potentially an upset winner, one of those younger drivers, Alex Bowman. Uh, so certainly this is an exciting season so far. Uh, Fox is calling it the best season ever. We will go to Las Vegas next week. Seems like the Penske drivers tend to do very well at Las Vegas, so I would definitely watch Brad Keselowski and Joey Logano at the Las Vegas Speedway. Those two seem to always be in contention, and they seem to win a lot, especially in the first Vegas race or the, the spring Vegas race. So definitely want to watch those guys next week. Uh, and there will actually be 16,000 fans in the grandstands for Vegas next week, uh, which is certainly exciting to at least have some fans uh, in the stands. And we'll continue to see how NASCAR moves forward with that. Uh, the later on we get into the season. I think going into the fall this year, we could have a bit more than 30% or 40% uh, capacity. We'll have to see how that turns out, but certainly something to follow. Anyway, that's it. Tune in for the video next week after the Las Vegas race. If you're not first, you're last, and let's get routed.